It's one of the saddest stories in drumming. We talked to Jeff Skunk Baxter. This is part one of our third interview with Jeff Skunk Baxter as we talk about Jim Gordon, Derek and the Dominoes, Steely Dan, everybody. Derek recently passed away in prison. After his rock and roll heyday, he had severe mental problems, so much so that he murdered his own mother. In this clip, you'll hear Jeff Skunk Baxter talk about the fact that Jim Gordon was one of the greatest drummers he's ever worked with. Did he see signs of mental illness when he worked with him? And then we've got an older clip of him talking about Jim Gordon when he was thinking of visiting him in prison. Part one of our third interview with the great Jeff Skunk Baxter on Rock History Music. Since you and I talked, Jim Gordon, uh, oh, God. we lost him. And I and, and when we talked, you'd said, you know what, it'd be, maybe I should get around to talking to him. It's a difficult situation to talk to someone in his in his uh, yeah. uh, predicament, of course. Was there any signs when you worked with him that there was something not 100% about him? No. All I knew was this guy had to be one of the greatest drummers I'd ever played with in my life. And, and I, uh, it was a decent cat. I mean, I, there, yeah, there really was no, no inkling of anything. That I could tell. I was reading a thing on Derek and the Dominoes yesterday about uh, him and, and, and Eric fighting. Uh, Jim had got a new kit. It was a huge kit. And he was just spending all his time putting it together. And by the time they, they that Jim was ready, Eric would just, just, just had enough and stormed out and says, I'll never play with you again. And I'm going, well, that, that, that could happen to anybody, of course, right? Um, by the way, what happened to, what do you think happened to, uh, to, uh, to Jim Gordon. Like, that's just, talk about. Gosh, that is such a sad, sad story. I haven't talked to him in quite a while. I did go visit him a couple of times, but I haven't, I haven't talked to him. And you know, that's a good idea. As we get older, sometimes it's just, you have to do the right thing. Sometimes you get so much on your plate, you forget to do the right thing. Thanks for reminding me. I'm going to, I'm going to look into that. You know, there, there. I, I think with that sort of thing, that it, I don't think anyone knows doesn't know anybody who's gone off the rails like that. Or if it's sometimes it's one thing after another thing that just can. But it's, but a lot of people were asking me to ask you because how was how was he? I can you can you say anything? Can I don't want to pry, but well, and again, I'm very careful about. Um, I, I'm not real good at gossip, and I don't answer a lot of questions about the Doobie Brothers, Steely Dan, my family, other people, simply because uh, I know how to keep a secret. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah part you of do. my job. <clears throat> but I just don't find it at all uh, fulfilling or even necessary to get into the sort of the dirt stuff. So I don't really know a lot about the actual circumstance. What I do know is that every time I work with Jim Gordon, it was a joyful experience. As a drummer... No, as a musician who also played drums, being in the same room with him and playing with him was amazing. It was kind of like, I guess, what the Pied Piper would have been. You get behind him and it's going it's going to go great. Henry Dodge says, I think I remember he was going to run for political office at one point. Was that true? Yes. Uh, well, I think so. Yeah. I woke up one day and my dad called me up and said, what the hell is this? I said, what are you talking about? Front page of the New York times. It says you're running for Congress. I went, Oh, really? Okay. So I made a couple of calls, I called some of the folks in the, at the, in the RNC. I said, what's this? Said, well, we thought you might want to run for Congress. Well, next time tell me, but yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll explore it. And it was one of the most insane experiences the preliminary stuff I'd ever seen. The, the level of blood sport was so brutal. And the opposition was so desperate. Uh, I remember getting a call. I'm not even going to go into it, but they were, uh, uh, it had to do with they were going to go after my kids. And I thought, you know, I, I don't, I, 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 I'll do a better job for my country doing what I'm doing. <clears throat> and I just, I'm not really interested in uh, to, what to me seemed to be a horror show. 
Would I ever consider it? I I don't think so. I'm too old for one thing. I well, think. Speaking speaking of too old though, you don't strike me as a guy, and I'm not either. I'm I, you've got a few years on me, but I'm 62, and I people ask me, "You're going to retire in three years?" And we're why? I I like. I mean, my dad was 65. He sat in a rocking chair and basically started to dis, disintegrate in a rocking chair. So, what's your take on that? Uh, well, I was doing gigs with Les, with Les Paul. He was 94, 93, 94 years old. Are you kidding? You know, maybe he didn't have the dexterity, but it didn't make any difference because the thermonuclear fire inside him <laughs> always came out, was like the sun. <laughs> and, uh, no, no problem. And some of the people that I work with, especially in my day job, are 85, 86 years old and sharp as tax. Yeah. And they have all of that wonderful storehouse of knowledge. Hopefully, whatever I've learned and gained uh, over the years, I can share. And I agree with you. I think once you stop using your mind, it's just, a, you know, you're on the clock. I don't know if I asked you last time, did I ask you the the uh, the dentist's office, the doctor's office question? I'm, I'm not sure if I did, because I, I do so many interviews that sometimes I forget what I've asked someone. Fair enough. But, but if you're at a doctor's office, <clears throat> if someone says, what do you do? What do you, how do you, how do you answer that question? Do you open that door? Because I mean, obviously if you say you're a musician, do you do anything that I would know? And all of a sudden the energy changes, not in a bad way necessarily. It's like a party. Do you want to go there? What do you, what if, if someone doesn't know who you are and they say, well, what do you do? How do you answer the question? I'm so a professional musician and a, and a national security SME, a subject matter expert. So, so what do they say after, what do they ask you after? Well, then they, you know, you, I, I, I don't tend to be, you know, wear it, you know, a t-shirt says I'm, you know, it's Jeff's skunk next. They said, well, have you, have you done anything I've ever heard to? I said, well, yeah, I started a band called Steely Dan, and then I played in the Duke. Oh, then, then the conversation opens up. But I don't open up with, hey, I'm this really cool guy who's played in these bands. I just find that um, slightly distasteful. Well, also, reputation is someone else's business, I always say. I, I always go, you can, you're not in charge of your rep. You know, someone else will decide whether right or wrong what you are. So... I'm it's a question that's come up a lot it's interesting so many musicians I know say I don't I never lead with that I can't lead with that kind of thing if someone wants to say who I am that's fine yeah I think that's the right way to approach it yeah I mean the the way the way you want to do things I or the way I like to do things is you try to start on as a level playing field as possible that that eliminates a number of biases except for obviously the neuropassive linguistics when you first meet somebody. Uh, that's a fancy word for body language, et cetera. Um, but no, I, I was thinking about the doctor's office. Uh, used to go to a dentist, his nickname was Smoke. Really cool guy. And uh, uh, he knew I was a musician. So we set up a really nice music listening system in his office. So, um, and he said, okay, I'm gonna teach you how to titrate the nitrous oxide. So you, you know, I trust you. You're, you know, you know, you understand chemistry and physics. So here's how you do it. And when I come back, you're going to be ready. I said, you bet. And, 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 okay. About 20 minutes later, I'm ready. I got the headphones on beautiful set of headphones and I'm listening. And then they start to operate, you know, they start to do the thing. And I gather about 45 minutes into it, uh, all of a sudden they're ripping all the stuff off my face and the mask and, and everything. And I, and I go, wow, what, what's happening? It says, are you okay? I said, yeah, I, I'm, I'm fine. What's the, what's the matter? Well, you, you got tears streaming down your face. Are you in pain? I said, no, I'm into the second movement of Beethoven's sixth symphony. You just ruined this for me. <laughs> you know? So yeah, exactly. It says, okay, okay, well, let's get, Let's get right back to it. Now we know. Okay. so There's information on Jeff Skunk Baxter's brand new album, his first solo album of all time. Sure took him a lot of years. He's thinking of doing another one now, by the way. Right in the description of this video. Remember, if you want to make a donation to the channel, there are links at the very top to PayPal. You can join our Patreon, get early access to all our videos from all of our channels. But really, like our videos, subscribe to our channel, share them on social media, and comment on them. I'm John Bowden. 
This is Rock History Music. Take good care of yourself. <laughs>